day of math class in real life high school. Wow, these kids are behind in math. Damn, he's cute. Searching for excuse to talk to him, looking for excuse to talk to him. Could you explain L'Hopital's rule to me? Yeah, sure. So, you use L'Hopital's rule when you get an indeterminate form, such as 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And you take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately, and it gives you the right answer. Can you show me an example of that? Yeah, sure. When you're faced with an indeterminate form like 0 over 0 when evaluating a limit, you can take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately to find a new answer. This would give us 1 over 1. Yeah, I already knew that. Wow, you're like really smart. So you're like really good at calc. Thanks. So you agree that you're really good at calc? What? So you think you're really good at calc? Yeah, move. Move. Oh, okay. So like, what are the derivative rules? Well, there are three main derivatives. Well, what are they? Uh, the power rule is really simple. You just take the original equation, bring the exponent down and multiply it by the coefficient, and leave the x, and subtract 1 from the exponent. The chain rule is almost as simple. You do the same thing with the inside, but first you turn this cosine, or this sine, into a cosine. Leave the inside the same and multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the quotient rule, it's a little bit more complicated. If y equals u over v, then y prime equals u prime v minus v prime u over v squared. And here's where I wrote out my u, u prime, v, and v prime, and this would be the final product. <laughs> I'm kind of psychic. I have fifth sense. What? It's like ESPN or something. My breasts can tell when someone's using a derivative rule incorrectly. And now representing Ballard High School, we have this guy. And from North Shore High School, Katie Heron. And now the contestants must graph the antiderivative of this function. This answer is not correct. f of 1 is at 3, so our starting point is at 3. And then this means there's a negative slope of 2. This point is above the x-axis, so it's positive. And the area underneath this point is 1 and a half, so we're going up 1 and a half. Then the area underneath this portion is a half, so we go up another half. Then this line is going to turn into a curve because it's above the x-axis and below the x-axis, so we're going down a half. And then this means it's going to be a positive slope of 1. 
Is that your final answer? Yes. You are the winner! <laughs> From North Shore, Katie Heron. I'm supposed to say that. Okay. <laughs>